When you run IntelliJ IDEA for the first time, you'll see a welcome window showing some of the easiest ways to get started. You can create a brand new project, import a project from another format, which might be another IDE or might be defined via Gradle or Maven. You can open an existing IntelliJ IDEA project or check out code from a version control system. In this simple walkthrough, we're going to create a new project. For Java projects, you'll need to have a JDK installed somewhere on your computer and you need to tell IntelliJ IDEA where this is. For this example, I want to add a Java 8 SDK so I can compile my project with Java 8. On the Mac, Java is usually found in Library, Java. From here you can navigate to the version you want. I'm going to choose Java 8 Update 121, the most recent version. We're going to create a simple Java project so we don't need to make any changes on this screen. For this example, we're going to use a simple template to provide our structure and basic code. Now we have to choose a project name and select a location to save the project files. I'm going to keep the default here. We can also give a base package, so the code is put into the correct directory and package. IntelliJ IDEA now creates your project. Every time you start the IDE, it will show you a tip of the day. These are really useful to get to know IntelliJ IDEA if you're new to it, but even seasoned users will pick up new information. You can see IntelliJ IDEA has created a very simple Java file for us. Before we start coding, let's take a quick look around the IDE. We can open up more windows to see different aspects of our project. Note the keyboard shortcuts on the right, which will help us navigate quickly to the views we need. The project window is very useful for seeing the structure of our project. If I press the scroll from source button, I can see where the file that's open in the editor on the right is in the directory structure of the project. IntelliJ IDEA created a source directory for our Java code and the package structure we asked for. We can also see any libraries we're using. In this case, we're only using the Java 8 SDK and nothing else. Now, let's see the project settings and look at some of the common changes we might want to make. There are a lot of settings because IntelliJ IDEA is very customizable, but it's also easy to find the ones you want by using the search box. For example, we can change our font settings. I'm going to create a new scheme for my custom settings so that if I need to, I can always change back to the defaults. We can select a new font and I'm going to increase the size of this font so you can see more clearly the changes I'm making. Other settings you might want to customize, especially if you're working in a team with coding standards, are the code style settings. Here you can configure your default tabs, your preferences for spaces in the code, and how you like the code to be wrapped and formatted. Now we're going to take a look at the project structure. Here you can check you've selected the correct SDK and also set the language level. It's possible to compile with Java 8, but only use Java 6 features for backwards compatibility, for example. We're going to use the default level for our project. Now let's write some code. IntelliJ IDEA has several types of code completion to help you. By default, it makes suggestions while you're typing to let you select the most appropriate values as soon as possible. Now we've got something that compiles, we can run it. Of course, you can run your code from the Run menu, or you can use the navigation bar. And you'll see that IntelliJ IDEA builds the project and pops up a Run window to show you the output of running this code. We can configure slightly more complex examples as well. Let's change this code so that we print out the value of the first argument to the application. Now I need to configure the arguments to this application. So I can go to Edit Configurations on the Run menu or do it from the navigation bar. The application I'm running should be selected and here I can pass in options to the VM or arguments to the program. Let's pass in a string argument for the program to print. You're probably going to run your code fairly frequently, so remember the fastest way is to use keyboard shortcuts. In this case, Ctrl R for the Mac or Shift F10 for Windows and Linux. You can also use the gutter icons to run or debug classes or methods if you prefer. We can see our program arguments were passed into the application and the new message was printed. Take a look at the YouTube channel for more video tutorials. Thanks for watching.